When you've only got a little extra time between check-in and check-out, Travel and Leisure's got you covered. This is such a cool city. There's a lot of things to do. We see a lot of young people, but this place is pretty historic, and that's just cool. You can't really get that anywhere else. Whether you're extending your trip alone or with a travel buddy, check into the hotel and drop your bags, because we've got the perfect itinerary when you only have a single day between check-in to check it all out. In a city known for ghost tours, the historic Zero George Hotel was built in 1804 and today brings modern style with the 19th century mysterious vibes you'd expect from the city. Zero George is fancy. It's really beautiful. I love the courtyard. I love the ivy on the brick walls. It feels really historic. The minute you walk out of that hotel room door, you know what time it is. You're in one of the top foodie cities in the country. It's time to eat. Fine dining and a boutique hotel in one, the rooms are set in five restored homes with the acclaimed restaurant nestled in the courtyard. Perfect for when the meal is over and you realize you're not gonna wanna leave this city anytime soon. I've been here for seven and a half years. I came from New York to open up the restaurant. So they gave me kind of free reign to make sure that we just make this program as excellent as possible. And it really is a culinary focused hotel. We work out of, you know, 200 square foot or less kitchen to do, you know, 52 people a night and everybody gets 12 courses. So you're getting over 600 dishes a night out of this tiny little kitchen meant to be a family home kitchen. So it's definitely a challenge. Every night you can choose which cheese you'd like to have, which glass of wine you'd like to go with it, and you just go enjoy it on the property. It's really just our way of saying thank you to our guests. So hopefully throughout your stay, you'd never have the same cheese twice. With spiraling waterways filled with boats docked in marinas, no trip to this coastal city is complete without some water activities and seafood. So now that you've eaten, hit the water and see every inch of those channels. But with only so many hours in a day before checkout, you've got to speed it up. Welcome to Speedboat Adventures. My name's Graham Lake the Cracker. I'll be taking care of you today. <laughs> we are here in the Ripley Light Marina on James Island. We are gonna exit the marina and enter the Ashley River and take a right. We're gonna go down the Ashley River and make our first stop at the Battery. Once you leave the marina, you'll be in the Ashley River. And we're gonna go into this big bridge, which is the James Island Connector. Charleston's called Low Country. Basically, we're underwater. So there are so many creeks and rivers and places to explore if you have a boat in Charleston. It's a real water sport centered city. It was exhilarating to go that fast on the water. It was really interesting to see the historic buildings. I had a great time. If boating isn't your pace and you don't mind getting your hands a little dirty while you work up an appetite before dinner, has Tia got a job for you? I'm a Charleston native. True Charleston native is what I call myself. I just started crabbing four years ago for the first time. When I found crabbing, it brought me a certain kind of joy. And to live here on the coast, close to the water, and not be able to have that connection with where my food was coming from, I didn't realize how I was missing that from my life. I'm of Gullah Geechee descent, over eight generations, and my family ate crab four times a week. People come visit Charleston and they get shirts and hats, say Charleston. That's not really visiting Charleston, you know? Like, yeah. this is what me and my people did for years to feed themselves. Doing this has added a certain kind of joy to my life that now I get to share with people. This is an Atlantic blue crab. You can reach out and feel <laughs> so much. You can see why they call them a blue crab. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that blue is just fantastic. <laughs> this is a five-inch regulation blue crab right here, <laughs> aka my built-in ruler. <laughs> Give that baby back in the water. All right. Good job. Goodbye, man. friend. All right. That was awesome, man. Oh, yeah. That's good <laughs> stuff. Good. While Charleston has enough seafood joints to keep you full for an entire month, going with a spot that focuses on seasonal local catches is the best way to experience the food scene like a true native. Chubby Fish is based on local sustainable seafood, so our chef James London, he came back to Charleston. I grew up in South Carolina and wanted to do something with the seafood here because in his travels to New York and San Francisco, he felt like this city of Charleston had some of the best seafood to offer. Definitely some crudo items I would highly recommend, the amberjack crudo with the jalapeno vinaigrette, chili garlic shrimp, really beautiful local white shrimp. This absolutely feels like Charleston. 
tell that they take a lot of pride in what they do there and they get everything from here so you feel like it's a little part of the city. While you reminisce about the day's adventures before it's time to check out, how about a nightcap? With 30 microbreweries and counting, there's a pretty good chance that no matter how many times you visited, you've yet to try them all. One of the early pioneers in the movement was Edmunds Oast, which was opened in 2008 by two self-proclaimed beer geeks. I frequently compare brewing to artistry, and thankfully I work with some really talented artists here at Edmunds Oast. As a brewery, we're an extremely green brewery. We try to connect to the local farmers and growers in the community as much as possible. Charleston has an amazing farm scene here. Whether it's hogs, beef, produce, we like to support the farmers in the community a lot. This is our barrel aging room. There aren't many breweries that have the ability and the space to do this kind of aging. The longer that you can age it, the more flavor you're gonna get out of a barrel. And a brewmaster is gonna determine when that beer has reached the maturity that he's looking for. It definitely is, kind of painting with beer sometimes. <laughs> this is the black tea one. Yep, with molasses. Yeah, you could definitely taste the molasses. Yeah, this is really unique. I've never had a beer like this before. It's been a blast from the beginning to the end. Awesome restaurants, experiences. There's a lot of culinary expertise in the city and people really pride themselves in the food here. It's really been an awesome trip. So next time you're in Charleston and you don't have a ton of time after check-in, now you know some great spots with incredible food, adventures on the waterways, and those unique brews to check out by the time you check out.